and um, um, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 6. Um, are we set? Can we have the scripture on screen? 1 Timothy chapter 1 and uh, verse chapter 4 14 sorry. 1 Timothy 4 14 and uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 6. Now if they are not ready with us, please can you open your Bibles? Amen. At least that's how we were raised. Okay, they are ready for us. It's our first reading. Can we be on our feet in honor of God's word? Let's be on our feet. First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 14. I don't expect you to come to this kind of a church and not have a jota. You know, that's what uh, just uh, they told us in school. I, I won't forget. I can't, I can't remember my social studies teacher. But that man taught me something I will never forget. He said, no matter what the teacher teaches you, it is what you jot down that you gain. So he taught us, and I will never forget. So I don't use to read my notes. Whenever he's teaching, I make points. He taught us to go and get jotters. So, and whenever exam is coming, I read the points. My, I go to my jotter. And I started passing exams. That no matter what the person is preaching, it is one you jot. That's why your jotter is important. Can we read? One, two, and let's go. I didn't hear you. One, two, and let's go again. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by what? By prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of. Okay, Second Timothy chapter one verse six. Second Timothy chapter one verse six. One, two, and let's go again together. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou, gift of God. Indeed, by now you see that two scriptures saying the same thing. There's a gift in thee. There's a gift in thee. The first one he said it was given by prophecy. The second one he said it was given by the laying on of hands. Now let's have our seats. Father, we trust you again to speak to our hearts today. In Jesus' name we have prayed and amen. Now let's start by saying your gift is what you were given by God as a tool. Your gift is what you were given by God as a tool to serve humanity and to attract them to God. Now let me come again. Your gift is what you were given by God as a tool to serve humanity and to attract them to God. Now look at it. It's a tool that God gave you to serve humanity. To and to do what? To attract people to God. So your gift is a tool. Your gift is a tool for service. Now what's your gift? A tool for service. Sin. I don't know how to speak it in Yoruba, but it's a tool for service. To humanity. Your gift is a tool, you know, of service to humanity. Now, I put it this way again in my uh, note. That your gift is, okay, a unique understanding of something. A unique understanding of something. It could be something you learned. The major way to know that it is your gift. We'll talk about it when we get there. So, your gift is what? Is a unique understanding. Now, when something is, is your gift, you begin to discover that you have a unique understanding of it. It's a tool that God gave you for service. Now, go back to the scriptures. Paul the Apostle instructs Timothy to stir up the gift which is given to him. The same instruction was also repeated twice. Now, we saw it twice. To what? To stir up the gift. And I told us the first Sunday when I was teaching that an undiscovered gift, hear me, be it natural or spiritual, will die. I, you know, I told you this briefly. Any gift you have that you did not discover you have, what will happen to that gift? It will die on its own. Now, so many gifts are inside people. That's why Paul kept saying to Timothy, stay up that gift now 
Timothy, stir up that, stir up that gift. Don't let that gift that you have die. I remember uh, the, the first, one of the, thing, the, the, the encounters I have, they has, they has teared up my writing gift. You know, I used to write messages, write messages, write from day one I got born again. You will see that when I do my morning devotion, those years of my being young Christian, I will study the scripture and I will write down what I gained from the scripture. I remember one day, my pastor, the one that led me to Christ, you know, I wasn't around, was going through my, uh, I call it um, morning devotion notebooks. And he came to meet me when I came back. Prince, how did you understand all these things? I wrote down this way. I said, I was studying the scriptures as you taught me and the things I gained, I wrote them down. I didn't think it beyond that time until I attended one meeting by Pastor Kanye Kolade of World Impact Church. He was dedicating a book and now said, this is my 12th book I'm dedicating. You know, where I sat down, I was touched. I was inspired. And something started telling me, Prince Will, if you could write your morning devotion down, you can write books. And if you could write down your messages that you have been preaching since you've been a pastor, you can. So I sat down, I got back home, I wrote my first book. And what was the title of that first book? It was called uh, for, uh, Prosperity Keys and reasons why you need to prosper i call it 16 or 17 prosperity keys and 14 reasons why you must prosper so i wrote those book that the thing down i took it to the typist as they were typing in the way ah, this thing is powerful i'm blessed to i'm blessed to i took it to the publisher the publisher said wow this is a book for our time and do you know that i printed that book i sold everything i was shocked it led me to write the second one I call it wisdom keys. Very small. Uh -uh. Just like joke too. Now, and these wisdom keys, you know I got them. When I study scripture, I'll get a proverb from each scripture I study and I'll write it down. Principle in form of proverbs. I'll write it down. So I made them into, you know, books. The, the first key I wrote those days, you will only be followed by those you are amazed. You know? Then it moved me. I went to the third one. Do you know that as at present, I have written 14 books. And all the 14 books I have written. In fact, somebody called me from Zaria. I've never been to Zaria before. He said, Pastor, I read your book. What's the title of that book? I want to try to remember. Uh, Fulfilling Your Vision. I read your book, Pastor. It's a blessing. I just want to tell you that thank you for blessing me. Then I was shocked to a pastor called me. Hello, sir. He said he said it in Yoruba language. You wrote a book, but you didn't finish it. Uh, what's the title of that book again? Uh, I think for for young, uh, about to be married. Uh, 20, 24 Laws for Tomorrow's Wife. I think, I, yes, 24 Laws for Tomorrow's Wife. And I wrote only 13 that I've not finished. The, the volume 2 will come out. The pastor said, I use one one law every Sunday for 13 Sundays. And I titled my message, 24 Laws for Tomorrow's Wife. Pastor, when will the remaining come out? Because the members are waiting for me to preach number 14. <laughs> and I said, oh, thank you, sir. I didn't know that that book is a blessing. In fact, a senator's wife called me and said, sir, I had to send this, this book, 24 Laws for Tomorrow's, for Tomorrow's Wife, to my children in UK. How? I had to discover it when I was in an environment somebody was dedicating a book. Now what am I saying? A gift you have that you did not discover you have will die naturally. Praise the Lord. May your gift not die. I didn't hear your amen. Now beloved, our first lesson today is to show us that God is the main source of all gifts. Both spiritual gifts and natural gifts. Now, God is the main source of every gift. The devil does not have capacity to give anybody gift. Now, when I say spiritual gift and natural gift, now this one that I'm doing now, do you know that I'm preaching to you is a spiritual thing. I understand scriptures. I can share it with you. A spiritual gift. Do you know that there are some people that have natural gift of, you know, they know how to talk. They, they call them sorrow, sorrow. You know? Uh, in, in the, the organized program, some of them are MC. 
you see somebody organize a program as an MC, you are touched. You have not done anything good, or any great thing, but you are saying to yourself, ah, if I'm going to do anything, I will invite this man. Natural gift. There is no good gift that came from the devil. How do I know this? James. Look at the book of James. Chapter 1 and verse 17. James chapter 1 and verse 17 confirms it. Do not give the glory of any kind of natural or spiritual gift to the devil. He cannot give gift. Look at it. Once one, let's go. He said every good gift. Look at it. And every perfect gift is from where? It's from above. And come down from the father of light with whom is no variableness neither shadow of turning every good gift you'll see some people they have natural ability to manage account if you put them in charge of your company account i'm telling you the fact they will find one cobble that miss if a one cobble won't miss now such a person is daniel they are very very good with the account it's not that they just went to school they will go to school for it so they may not even before they went to school they started manifesting it they only went there to upgrade i will tell you when we get to that point natural gift is from god there are those who are gift with sports if you look at somebody like luna messi somebody like cristiano ronaldo you will know that this ones is a natural gift apart from that they went to the academy to learn how to play yeah some, somebody like that you know that this thing is natural they are not struggling about it the source is God and the purpose is that what like I said I will tell you when I say go on we emphasize it more is to serve humanity so do not give the devil the glory for any good gift do I know there are so many churches so many leaders who doesn't understand that some gifts are from God they say no how will God give somebody the gift of playing football well it's for entertainment if there are no entertainment all of us will die on time now some of you don't like football some of you like tennis some of you don't like tennis some of you like basketball are you getting what I'm saying every good and perfect gift is from God is from God. Let's go on. Let me go on with my reading. Hallelujah. I didn't hear you. Hallelujah. So both spiritual and natural gift. It is what, sorry, it is what you were given by God as a tool to serve humanity and to attract them to God. We call them in this in the church setting. We call it calling. Our man kwe tuani kwe, but it's a gift. Talent is a gift. Calling. Now let's confirm that. Ephesians chapter 4, 8 to 13. You will see that even the calling of evangelists, the calling of pastor, prophet, teacher, is a gift from Christ. Praise the Lord. Ephesians chapter 4, from verse 8 to verse 13. The Bible says, Wherefore he seeth, when he ascended up on high, he what? He led captivity captive. And gave, gave gifts unto men. He led captivity captive, gave gifts to men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended forth into the lower part of the earth? He gave gifts unto men. Let's go on. Verse 10. He gave gifts unto men. He descended. And he that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might fill all things. That he might fill all things. 11. Move fast. We don't have all the time. And he gave some, look at it, it's a gift. He gave some what? Apostles, like me now I'm an apostle. Now, he gave some prophets. Now, who is an apostle? Wait for me with that scripture. An apostle is one that he puts in charge of a peculiar assignment. Now, mostly they are founders of churches. Founders of peculiar ministries. Praise the Lord. Now, after that, the Bible says he gave some prophets. Who are prophets? Now, this one is different from having the gift of prophecy now. You can have the gift of prophecy as a Christian. But those that are called to be prophets, they gave them the gift of prophets. They have access to divine revelations. Now, in the New Testament, it's not that they will just only see. When they teach, it's like they were inside your room. And you'll be saying, ah, sir, 
she wa me ngba tin kon sele lano ni ah ki lo sele if i mess it and preach it nkan to sele nle wa lano solution e le fun wa e that's a prophetic gift now an apostle can manifest the whole gifts that's why an apostle is different he can manifest as a prophet he can manifest as a pastor he can manifest as a teacher he can manifest as an evangelist so he gave some to be prophets now let's go on he gave some evangelists now who are these ones you will see that they have an unusual burden for soul winning now every christian is supposed to win so we all are called into soul winning ministry but those that he gave the gift of evangelists you see that the burden is so high and see if they sit down even with the devil they will convert the devil that strategy is just there if an, an apostle can manifest it too listen and some pastors now some people now who are pastors these are those that have the passion to care for the souls that have been brought together now an evangelist has passion to win the souls the pastor has passion to care for them to make sure that they don't fall away and he gave some teachers gifts in it who are teachers they see beyond the ordinary when you say something they can they can expand it they can pick one statement and be preaching on one statement for one year and you'll be shocked ah, ah. their understanding is deeper than others am i communicating so even what we call calling is a gift from who from jesus now let's confirm more let's confirm more let's confirm more now look at one more scripture exodus 36 1 and 2 exodus 36 1 and 2 for you to understand that even what we call talent is a gift from god exodus 36 1 and 2 he said then rod Beseli and ahiluab and every wise hearted man in whom the lord what look at it the lord put wisdom and understanding to know how to work all manner of work for the service of the sanctuary according to all that the lord had commanded god gave them Vasu, Vasu, there's no time. We are moving. For, we have a lot this morning. And Moses called Bezali and Aholab, and every wise uttered man, in whose heart the Lord had put wisdom, even everyone whose heart stirred up to come unto the work. Now, these people, when they have, now look at this pulpit now. Look at this pulpit. How is he standing? Now, these are people like Bezali. They can pick iron, they can pick brass. They can pick anything. They just sit down, formulate it, and say, ah, what can we, we can bring something out of this thing. And they will do it and come out. It's a gift from God. Our God is a giver of gifts. Praise the Lord. I didn't hear your ear. I said, praise the Lord. So who is the source of us, all kinds of gifts, both natural and spiritual? God. I wrote here, beloved, it can be something you discovered how to do even by learning. Your gift can be something you learned, but you understood it better. You know, And the mechanic, They learned it from best masters, but they cannot even unscrew. So that you are, you learned hairdressing, you learned fashion designing, and you now come to understand it is a gift say say after me all natural and spiritual gifts i didn't hear you are from god question number two let's quickly answer it what is the purpose of the giftings we have what is the purpose it is to be a vessel in god's hands in order to serve humanity at various levels i come again it is to be a vessel in God's hands in order to serve humanity at various levels. Now look at it now. For instance, somebody like that the grace now is an estate agent. Now, he knows where the houses are. Evan is also one. Somebody has the money, is looking for house. He will do all the moving around. Hello? He will do all the findings. The person that needs house will just say, please, I need house. He will say, I'll take you there. He's serving humanity hello that's why i say look up you are not permitted to have money if you are not serving in any way money does not come by prayer money does not come by fasting it comes by what you rendering service that's why god gives us gifts so that we can serve our race 
for instance mrs Ogunyemi, you are you are you are an hairdresser somebody's hair is rough he cannot do it by herself why did she come to your shop so that you can serve her so you bring the head you begin to weave it okay ah, mrs Ogunyemi, what do you have for me you give a star the person will look at herself on the mirror and say wow this is beautiful so every one of us look up i'm talking to you every one of us we are ministers in god's hands but who are we ministers in the marketplace now i am a minister serving in church you are a minister serving where in the marketplace that's how you must see your gift god gave you that gift so that you can use that gift to serve humanity now like you now you are a teacher abby now children pass through you they should be able to look backward when they get to their future and say ah I want to thank God for Mrs. Salau. If not for Mrs. Salau, ah, I would have, I would have hated maths all my life. That's why whatsoever gift you have that you are not using to serve well, even God will not bless you. My brother is in the transport industry. Abi, that's where you are. It's a gift from God. Stop looking at your gift as a curse some people want to go out they don't have means of transport it's a ministry on its own so they will call you hello hello brother sam ibulewa 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 monidi for four hours you are serving haven't you i've seen people who learned how to drive who up till now they've gone to all kind of school one more driving are you sure you are here so, what is the purpose of your giftings? You are a keyboardist. That's the gift. Some people, if you put them on this key, 10 years. Black and white, black and white, black and white. white. But he's serving. So, understand that the purpose why God gave you gift is for you to serve as a vessel in his hands to humanity. He said, my school here. Hallelujah. Daniel, by his excellent service, served about four kings. He served King Nebuchadnezzar. He served King Belshazzar. He served King Dairos. He served King Cyrus. Four kings. Now, Brother Femi is a printer. That's his job. Yes, you have an idea in your mind, but you can't carry it out. You just go to him. I want to do program. It is his duty to battle it on the on the on the computer, bring out a nice design. So every one of us should understand that we are all servants of God. And who are we serving? We are serving humanity. Who are you serving? You are serving humanity. Now that's the, okay. There's an officer outside there. Now that's his own gifting. He's a servant of God too. What is he doing? He's serving to render protection, to enforce the law. That no, 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 you can't break the law and think that you will go scot free. So, every one of us should begin to see ourselves as what? Servants of God. Tell your neighbor, I'm a servant of God. I am called to serve humanity in my own area. Now, third question What are the signs that shows you your gifts? What are the signs that shows you your gifts? They can come in the second service. What are the signs that shows you your gifts? Let's put that one in alphabetical order. A, your interest level will be very high. Kai, that's the first thing. Your interest level. See, any gift you claim to have that they are forcing you about, it's not your gift. Your interest level will be very, very high. I love my gift as a pastor ah, as an apostle sorry i love it i don't regret it at any way if you see how excited i am always you know like today now i've woken up as as early as past 12 preparing that i'm coming to bless people on sunday i'm always i'm always excited to be a pastor i'm always excited to meet people's needs i was counseling somebody on friday and when he told he said, sir, sir, I am homosexual. Sir, I am so, so, and so. I laughed. He said, sir, and nobody can change me. That is my life. I laughed. 
I started preaching. By the time we got to a point, he told me I started. By the time he got to a point, he said, sir, with what you are saying, I'm going to serve God. By the time we got to a point, I said, wait, before you make up your mind to serve God, how did this thing come? He got to a point, he now started telling me, gospel artists, ministers of God, sir, it was not difficult for me to bring him down to his knees. He knelt down. I saw these ministers you are mentioning, I know them. I know they are gay. But you made it wrong because you made somebody your role model. You don't look at people. If you look at people, you won't make heaven. He was shocked because he didn't come with a mind to give his life. But he met me. I enjoy my job. Your interest level. So, you say you are a pastor. You say you are a pastor. Or a freak in your own shape, Pastor. Uh, uh, you say you are evangelist. I should say, Ben, you be a man, be a loyal Lord Jerry or come what? A cool bear is alive. Marketan, yeah. But you should lose when they be evangelism. Have you gone to school and see people who are called teachers? Oh, my king, so I was talking to our cleaner in school. They said he gave them condition. They should tell our parents if they don't wear pampas for their children because it's a Calabar woman. That's our school at the level. If they don't wear pampas for their children, me, I'm not going to be packed shito. I'm not going to be packed shito. So I invited her. I said, when I wanted to employ you, what did I employ you for? She said, cleaner. Cleaner and sheets, they be the same. You go pack shito. I said, here, we, we stop pampas. We shouldn't encourage them to wear it. If at one year, six months, they are still wearing pampas, we are not doing our job. Do you know why? She's not, she's not a called caregiver. We have a called caregiver at our liberty school. I now told her, I said, that woman, only her, serving at all sessions, she will never complain. And her job, there will never be lapses. When we wanted to employ her, she came to apply for that job. She said, I've been a cleaner for 15 years. We moved from the environment where I was working in the school to this environment. If I got to a point, my wife had to increase her salary, paying her two persons, two people's salary. That she, you, you alone are doing two people's job. Samala know who I'm talking about. She will never complain. See, it is your interest level that reveals your gift. Whether you give me money or you don't give me an honorarium, Pastor Prince, once I hear preaching, I did radio, teaching, winning souls, I don't go. We are quiet today. Are you angry? So your, your, your interest level will be very high. I come again. Your interest level will be very high. You'll be, you will be so conscious of fulfilling it. if you see people that have a calling into the ministry uh, and to the uh, 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 military service the officer that is in charge of the that brings police officers to our church mr officer shegu i was told that his father is a police officer he went to join the police college he came out if you see him you know that his own is a calling the way he will wear his unit, very neat. The way he carries himself. You yourself will know that this man is interested in the job. You won't see Officer Shea going by the roadside. Asking for money. Do you know that he's the one they assigned to my mentor? You will always see him at the top places. It is when they are not traveling, you see him here. Call Messi Chingwo to come and sing. You will see that that's an area of interest. That's a gift. Uh, uh, what's his name? I'm looking at this. Time. What's his name? He used to rehearse with uh, this woman that sang, I'm walking in power. What? Frank Edward, yes. He said, I and uh, what's the name of that woman that sang? Sinach. He said, we'll be in the studio 18 hours rehearsing. This one that you say you have gift, you are not ready to spend money on your gift. 
It's a clear sign. Come to my office. Come and see different Bibles. Different versions. None of my Bible is less than 18,000. Your area of interest. <laughs> my, my first daughter, when she did GSS3 to cross to SS1, she got to SS1. I went to pick her in, and they said, uh, I said, where is Eniola? She said, she's in school. I said, where? They said, she's, your daughter is in science class. I said, go and drive her out. Ah, I went there. I said, Eniola, what are you doing? He said, that day, my school resort, I'm in science. So, Eniola, get out of there. That is not your calling. You and I know that you are a mass communicator. I told her when she was in GSS3, you and I know that you are a mass communicator. Don't waste your time. You can't see blood. You, doctor, my friend, carry your bag. Oh, yeah, go, carry your bag. Go, carry your bag. go to art class. Thank God she just carry her bag. I went to her. Whenever she's interviewing, you know she has a show on, she does online, Moment with any. They are on uh, 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 YouTube. Whenever she's doing her show, I always say, that's your line. The same thing with Oyin. When she finished GSS3, overall, she came out as second best. So the school invited her that as the second best in GSS3, Junior Waek. Don't waste this result. Go for science. They begged her. She said, No, I'm a lawyer. They begged her. She said, no, I'm a lawyer. So the school called me. Eh, sir, eh, we will waste this result. Sir, let her go into science. I said, she's, she has been telling us right from childhood that she's Eleanor Razor Blade. That she's a lawyer. Right from childhood. So we encouraged her. Do you know that they just finished their first exam? They called me from the faculty of law. That's are you the father of Oyola for I said, yes. He said, this girl made, I won't tell you the score. That the way she's going, so I do everything to encourage her, she will graduate with first class. I said, what's your score? He said, 4.9. He said, they have not added legal method. If they add legal method, I'll be 5.1. You'd, area of in, interest, Loman reveal Collier. But Sherry, you shut your banshee here. Oh, my dear. Be more to take away, take away, I be the cabrito on the lamb. You know, cabrito is disturbing a car. I'm like, number two, how do you discover your gift? Your flow in it will be special. Your flow, the way you will flow will be so special. Those of you that watch football, have you seen Lionel Messi with the with ball? His move with the ball, oh special. Look at Ronaldo with the ball, oh special. When, before JJ retired, look at him with the ball. I was going through, I was comparing Rashidi Yekini with Osimen. Rashidi Yekini is a scorer, he's a striker. Osimen on Shekbe. I mean, Kun Shekbe Osimen, sorry. If you give Rashidi Yekini five balls, he will score three. Your flow. I have a friend that is a doctor. If you see, the way he talks, everything about him shows that he lay one along, along basically. I want you to see tailors like that too. I want you to see dressers like that too. I want you to see teachers that when they talk with you, they are flow. So pay attention to your flow. Pastor Prince Will is never struggling, sir. But the, to the glory of God, to preach you, to teach to pastor people. Put the devil in front of me, my convert here, to the glory of God. Because I will first take my time to listen to you. I can listen to you for eight hours. I will not listen to you. I will not listen to you. 
So your flow in what, sorry, your flow in it will be special. There won't be any form of struggle. People will see it in you. I was with uh, Bale. You were there that day. I saw this man. I saw that this guy has a calling to be a bodyguard. He won't change as he told me. He has his way. Pay attention to your flow. Stop struggling. See? See? What are the signs that shows your gifts? See? Pain and sacrifice. Hear me? Sorry, pain of sacrifice or gain of sacrifice will mean nothing to you like the joy of fulfillment. Let me come again. The pain of sacrifice and the gain of sacrifice. What's the pain of sacrifice? Ah, ah, easy or lati prepare message. Ah, ko easy lati study. Ko easy lati practice. Ko easy lati, you know, it won't mean anything to you. The gain that, ah, if I, what profit did we make? Will not mean anything to you. How do you know that's your, your gift? See, there, there will be this joy. Anytime you have opportunity to do it, there is this joy that comes into your heart. The joy of fulfillment. Are you learning something? Ah, D. No obstacle will seem strong enough to be able to pull you from manifesting it. There won't be any obstacle that is strong enough. Yeah, eh, eh, sir, this is the reason why. Unless you lost it. Oh. You know, I used to tell people about it. If I say, ever, I want people to come to the church from this house. If ever wants to do it, people will come. The strategy we are using at the label church that the church is growing now, I got it from him. So, if it is your gift, obstacle won't stop you. Look at everything they said about David, about Goliath to David. He said, me, I'm used to killing things that are bigger than me. I keep the lion. I keep the bear. This one, nothing will stop you. Sir, they said, you don't know he has been a champion from you. <laughs> you look at his bear. Before you know it, he did it. He talked, talked, talked until he got in front of the king. Talk, talk, talk. Over. Ah, the king looked at him. And he was, and he does, ah. he said, ah, we go, sir. He was able to convince the king. Because if he was not able to convince the king, you know, the king put their life in his hands. The agreement was that whoever wins will serve the other country. I mean, whoever loses, we serve the winning, the country, the person, the country that the person wins uh, is representing. This one that you are giving excuse, Pastor, you don't understand. I don't think. Uh, I, uh, uh. That's what I told our pastors in uh, when we were, they were going to start the Ayegun Church. If you fail, lock the church, send the key to the agent, and don't bother to even call me again. Just go from there. Which means go and prove your call. Did they fail? E. You can also discover it by this, this sorry, the spirit of God will instruct you on it. The spirit of God will instruct you on it. It can also come by divine instructions. But don't forget, these signs will show. Sir, if you meet a driver that his calling is a driver, ah, you yourself will know that this one is a calling. I had one driver, I had to sack the Baba. Ah. In the night we are going home. I'll be telling Baba it's a 
Baba, it was an entity. And Aisha, Aisha, ah, me, they, they, Ali, Aisha, Aisha, ah, Ki Aisha, to me. <laughs> oh, yeah, let's take the next question. We have a lot to learn. Have you learned something today? What are the several mistakes gifted people make? What are the several mistakes gifted people make? Ah, this one very important. Gifted people make these terrible mistakes. I don't know if anyone will remember that his mommy came to me and was telling me that they want him to go and study. Uh, not any girl of study, no. Eh? Civil engineering. And the guy said he wants to go into for computer science. And I told the mom, eh, convert by your mom again. Eh, Jema Dalam. Leave. He has not gone to school. He's manifesting what he knows. Let him go and study what he knows. And he's doing well at it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Pay attention to these things. And parents, please, pay attention to your children too in these things. How many days ago? What, three or four days ago, I was telling my wife, I said, I'm yet to understand this with your last self. I was telling my wife. I said, because you will see that when it comes to further mass, this boy is good. They have not started, to, he's just in GSS1. But he does calculation on his head without paper. That means I'm still thinking of music, but the witch is manifesting. I'm yet to discover where this boy is going. And my wife started laughing. I said, but let's continue to study. You help your children discover. Don't treat your children as if you owe one profession. You now want them to come help you to pay. They will go and become a lawyer for you and drop certificate. That's what my Bible said. He said the father was always on him. You must be this. You must. He said, so I went to school to become what my father said. should become. I gave him the certificate. I never worked with it. So, what are the several mistakes gifted people make? Number one, they at times get so consumed with their gift that they neglect character. They at times get so consumed with their gift to the point that they neglect character. Ah, they are so gifted. I mean, gifted drummer, gifted keyboardist, gifted driver, gifted pastor, gifted this, gifted that. And they forget that gift can open doors, but it is character that determines if you will not be thrown out of that door. Gift can take you at the top. It is character that will determine if you will stay at that top. So I want to narrow to this one. Maybe I'll continue next week or oh, next week is combined service or next month. But I want to I want to stay on character. A lot of gifted people are not paying attention to their character. They are gifted. We cannot we cannot doubt that. But they neglect the aspect of character. Listen, they neglect the aspect of character. I wrote here, never forget that we are born again so that we can continue to live the life of God on earth. So a lot of gifted people you see, some of them are not honest. A lot of gifted people you see, some of them don't have integrity. A lot of gifted people you see, some of them don't have respect for people who after all, they need me. Haven't you met people like that before? They are gifted but don't have respect for people. They talk to people anyhow because of their gift. Some are so gifted, but they are not honest. So this morning, I want to show you five truths you should know if you will grow in the God life character. Five truths you should know if you will grow in the God life character. Hmm. 
I will rush to it. You are almost through. Number one, you can't grow in character. Sorry, you can't grow in the God life character without Jesus. You will need to. Where am I? Okay, you can't grow in the God life character without Jesus. You will lack the willpower if you don't have encounter. I will explain. You can't grow in the God life character if you don't have Jesus. If there was no time you gave your life to Christ. Some of you don't know that the reason why we don't want to sin is not that sin does not at times come to our heart. It wants to come. The devil wants to stay up to do what is wrong. But why will I not do it? Because I have a commitment to Jesus. I can't do it. I gave my life to him. I made a vow to follow him. So if there was no time you gave your life to Jesus, you can't live the God life. So anytime the devil tries to entice me with sin and I remember my covenant, ah, Mutibadi, ah, no, no, no. I, I gave my life to Christ. I have a covenant with him. I can't do this. I hold on. So that's why number one is very important. You can't grow in the God life character without Jesus. You will lack the willpower. And I wrote here, commitment to Jesus steers in us a drive to want to live right. That's the source of energy to live right. And that's the starting point for your character to be developed, to become godlike. My daughter was sharing with me yesterday. He said, Daddy, they did, they did one party in our school. He asked me three days ago, should I go for the party? Somebody paid for the ticket. He said, we have there's this party in our school uh, and there's fellowship. I, he said, Daddy, which one do I go? I said, go for the fellowship. He said, but somebody had bought the ticket, the dinner for me, one five. I said, sell it. He said, okay, I will sell it. So she now called. He said, Daddy, 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 uh, uh, baby school. He's in our school. He came to do candy, whatever. So, as he was helping baby school to carry things into the hall, she was shocked. She said she saw their fellowship leaders drinking beer. He said, sir, I saw the brother that is in charge of our fellowship, that whenever he lifts up his voice to lead praise, people fall under the anointing. He said, this guy was drinking. He said, they showed me, they saw me, they were shocked. He said, because they can never expect me to be there. But they, they were shocked. And the sister said, that is why I used to tell you, let Jesus be your room there. <laughs> Do you think the world is not attractive? It's our commitment to Jesus that makes us to say, goodbye world. That's what I told the person I was preaching to on Friday. He said, sir, the first time I came to this church, I wanted to join. He said, the guest artist that you invited was a gay. We know ourselves. He says, I saw him. Ha. Me, I was coming to join the church that I want to serve God. I saw that it was a gay that was leading praise. I said, I know. He said, how did you know? I said, there was a fight after that conference. That outside, him and his band people. I came into the band to invite them. What happened? And the people there told me, eh, I bought his phone. I saw so, so, and so, thing, and you know, and things like that. I said, that was how the secret came. And I said to myself, this person will never lead. We never come to our church to lead praise again. Do you see how some of you can drive people from serving God by your own life? If your neighbor is invited and you are not the one that invited them and somebody else invited and they enter the church and they see you, what would they say? Would they stay or would they turn back? Would they say, I you are married? But the commitment we have to Jesus. Number two, let me rush, there's no time. You can't grow in the God life character without a personal honest 
commitment to studying the Bible. I'll come again. You can't grow in the God life character without a personal, honest commitment to studying the Bible. If you will grow in God life character, you must have a, a honest, personal commitment to study the Bible. The Bible should not be something that you use to complete complement your dress. It is the truth you know that you practice now. Abby. Let's rush through. Let's rush through. Number three. Number three. Should I go on? You can't grow in the God life character without a personal commitment to your relationship with the Holy Spirit. You can't grow in the God life character without a personal commitment to your relationship with the Holy Spirit. There are some truths that nobody can tell you because nobody knows about it. You know, some of you are so expert. There are some truths about your life, nobody knows it. Only you know. And who can talk to you in such a time? So, if you are not committed to your relationship with the Holy Spirit, you can't grow in your God life. Number four. You can't grow in the God life character if you do not submit to be taught by your pastor. You see, all this rubbish going on on the internet, nobody wants to be under any pastor again. Ah, we will see the result of all these things in the next few years. Let me come again because of those writing. You can't grow in the God life character if you do not submit to be taught by your pastor. I, I, I had the Holy Spirit. I'm born again. I didn't need any pastor to teach me. I, no, listen. I, we just saw Ephesians. He gave some what? Apostles. If they were not necessary, Jesus will not give them to the church. If those gifts are not necessary, he won't give them to the church. If they were not necessary, he won't give them to the church. So you need to submit. That's why you come to church. Submit. Let the word of God continue to work. Hello? 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 That I come from I change the church. Let me rush this man once again. How many minutes do you have more? <laughs> you know, you now change church. You won't change. Then, lastly, you can't grow in the God life character without being devoted to attending church. You can't grow in the God life character without being devoted to attending church. How can you grow if you don't come to church? You are now beginning to say, Sir, I only come for Sunday service. What about Bible study? What about prayer meeting? Do you think those, our fathers that fashioned all this meeting, did it because you are jobless? No. They know that there is no how you can grow as you ought to grow in one service. The truths are so many, the time is so short. Like in this second service, I had to bring prayer meeting to Sunday because a lot of you need prayer, but you are not coming to prayer meeting. We are going to pray again in the second service. 
like last week Sunday. A lot of you need prayer, but you don't know you need prayer. And I know what a lot of you are looking at is, eh, sir, sir, eh, the fuel. Which one is better? Is it for you to drop because of fuel? Or for you to pray that God should empower you to the point that no matter how much they call for, you can buy? You know, God asked me a question. I'm summarizing with it. When I too was asking that ah, this fuel matter is too much, maybe I should not be coming to the office. God said there are two kinds of changes that you can have. You can either change to come down or change to go up. Which one do you prefer? And I said, Lord, because as at that time, somebody came to me and was saying, Pastor, a lot of pastors are selling their cars and buying bike now. He said, some are even buying Marua. Some are buying uh, Mikra. Because of where? And I told you, God asked me, is it for you to change? Change can be to come down or to go up. Now you can come down to be under or go up that you won't feel the inflection. I said, Lord, it is to go up. He said, begin to pray. It was the same time that there was famine in the land that Isaac planted his seed. Everybody's land wasn't produ producing. His own produced. And I thank God I didn't come down to the, to the level of going to buy a bike. How many bikes will I even buy? Maybe I'll buy one for myself, buy one for mama. <laughs> Abi will buy Marua from where the level where we're in. And people are asking, Papa, Kilo Shele, Marua Len Luni. Yeah. Condition and to change in this one. I don't bother why there is a God that lifts people up. So this morning, go back home with what I've taught you. Go and study yourself. Ask yourself, what gift have I been, been given? And the moment you discover it, go and begin to use your gift to serve. Offer solution to people with that gift. And don't forget, you serve God by serving humans. And the purpose is for you to serve them and bring them to God. Let them be saying there's none like you. Ah, I try. Your commitment. Please, where do you worship? Who is your God? Have you learned something this morning? Rise up and begin to thank the Lord for what you've heard. Say, Lord, I'm grateful. I give you all the praise. I give you all the honor. I appreciate you again for today. Reveal to me areas of myself that I'm yet to discover, Lord. Are you praying? Reveal to me areas of myself that I'm yet to discover, oh God. Holy Spirit, expound these teachings in my heart. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. I declare as you go again today that this is declared blessed for your sake in Jesus' name. All you lay your hands upon to do this week shall prosper. May you move from this level of glory to the next. May lives fall for you in pleasant places. It is well with you. You are blessed and favored. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. And amen. Can we share the grace together in fellowship? One, two, three, and let's go.